you'll learn how to get rid of those unwanted filler words. I have virtually eliminated all of my habitual fillers using these exact tips that you'll learn in this video. And I've helped lots of clients do the same. If you put the tips in this video into practice and stick with it, you'll reduce your fillers substantially. So think of this as a mini training. Fillers distract your listeners. They take the attention off of your message and they can make you sound long-winded. But I want to be clear that your goal is not to get rid of 100% of your fillers. We're not robots and perfection isn't our goal. In fact, using a filler every once in a while, let's say in a paragraph's worth of talk, is normal. That won't distract anybody. Sometimes there's a good reason to add a filler, which we'll talk about in a minute. But if you use a filler word or phrase once or more every sentence or two, then it's very likely distracting your listeners. Let's start with some mindset tips. The first step to getting rid of your filler words is to realize that you probably only have two or three filler words that you use out of habit. We're gonna look at lots of examples in a few minutes, but I'm guessing you only need to focus on getting rid of your worst habits to quickly sound better. And that's good news for you because you can focus your efforts. The second step is to understand why you use filler words in the first place. Do you feel that silence on your part signals a problem as if you've forgotten what you were gonna say? Do you believe somebody will interrupt you if you pause instead? Do you feel like you'll lose your listener's attention if there's no sound coming out of your mouth? Maybe you're filling the silence to think of what you're going to say next. And maybe it is just a habit and there's no clear reason that you know of. I recommend you at least reflect on the reasons you might use filler words in the first place. The better you understand your reasons, the easier it'll be to get rid of them. Third, get comfortable with some silence in conversations, meetings, and presentations. We normally put in fillers where we should be pausing silently instead. What may feel like a long silence to you could very likely come across as a thoughtful pause to your listeners. I was working on my pauses a few years ago. In the presentation, I felt like I was pausing for five or six seconds at a time. They felt like long pauses, in other words. But when I looked at the video later, my pauses were only about two seconds long and they sounded great. I had to get more comfortable with longer silences. Fourth, pausing silently has lots of benefits. A pause sounds better than a filler every time. A pause will slow you down and keep your pace moderate. It'll make you sound more concise. And this will make it easier for your listeners to follow your point. Even a one or two second pause will give your listeners time to absorb your ideas and consider what you've just said. A good pause makes everything you say land with more impact. Those are some mindset tips to get you ready to change your filler habit. So let's get even more practical and hands-on with the following behavioral tips. Fifth, identify your specific favorite filler words or phrases. What are your go-to fillers? If you can identify your top fillers, it'll make it easier for you to hear them in the moment and stop them. Let's look at some possibilities. Be on the lookout for your top two or three as we look at these. There are some classic public speaking fillers such as uh, ah, well, um, so, as well as the word and. I've seen entire presentations that are delivered as one long sentence because the speaker put the words and or so between almost every sentence. We often use those words as fillers. Some common filler phrases are, you know, kind of, sort of, I think, I feel, I mean, I guess, something like that. These are actual words, but they are usually fillers because you could remove them completely from what you're saying and you'd sound much smoother and more competent in those cases. Let's compare two examples with and without them. I mean, I think we can get it done, you know, versus we can get it done. When you take the fillers out, we'll sound more confident and clear. And next are unnecessary adverbs, actually, basically, apparently, technically, and we'll throw in the word like. If I could read people's minds, I'm guessing many people use fillers like these because they're under the impression that they sound intelligent. And that may be the case if you say these words once in a while for a legitimate reason. But you don't wanna be like the apparently kid who says it all the time. What did you think about the ride? It was great. And apparently, I've never been on live television before because apparently you're spinning around and apparently every time you get dizzy, yeah. that's all you do is get dizzy. Yeah, and apparently I only went down the super slide. If you use these words out of habit, 
than they are fillers. Another common filler habit is a tag question. Isn't it? Wouldn't it? Right. Okay. You know what I mean. These fillers come at the end of what should normally be a declarative sentence. Tag questions introduce unhelpful uncertainty. Granted, sometimes using a tag question serves a purpose. When I say, do you know what I mean? I may actually have a sincere question and I want to hear if you know what I mean. But based upon years of observation, most tag questions are asked out of pure habit. I'm giving you a big list here because there are many more fillers than the classics um and uh. So let's look at this list. What are your top two or three fillers that you personally use? For example, I used to say sort of and kind of and use an occasional um. Those were my top three. I used to work with a guy who said technically at the beginning of many sentences, whether it was needed or not. I know several people who ask tag questions out of habit. If you want to double check, ask a spouse or a trusted friend, do I use any filler words? What are my favorite fillers? And if you're feeling brave, look at a recording from a Zoom meeting to identify your top fillers. Let's assume you know what your top fillers are and you are comfortable with a little more silence. Now let's get rid of your fillers. Six, the big picture tip is to pause silently instead of using a filler word or phrase. And it's easier said than done. I understand that. It takes practice. You almost have to retrain yourself. But it's a skill like anything else, so be patient. Here's how it works. There are two ways to do this. The first is using the period method, like the punctuation mark at the end of a sentence. Here's how to practice behind the scenes. The period method has three phases. Phase one is where you have to hear yourself and catch yourself using the filler word. You stop mid-filler or mid-sentence and instantly say the word period instead. That means while you're practicing, say period aloud in place of the filler word. This will be awkward at first, but trust the process with me. This is phase one. So for example, let's pretend I'm practicing a presentation. Here's how it would sound when nobody else was around. A few years ago, I was walking through a period, the park near my house. I caught myself saying a, uh, and I immediately put in the word period instead. Phase one is all about catching yourself like this and saying the word period instead of the filler. Don't beat yourself up for saying a filler word. Every time you say a filler when you practice, just start replacing your filler with the word period aloud every time. I prefer saying period because it sounds more confident, like the punctuation mark. Some of my clients prefer to say the word pause. So use whatever word you feel best about. And by the way, if you can't hear yourself saying the filler word in the moment, practice more loudly than normal. Practice like this. I have two dogs, uh, period. One is a puppy and uh, one is older. When you practice more loudly, you'll hear your fillers more clearly. They'll stick out and that makes it easier for you to get rid of them. Once you can consistently hear the filler and catch yourself and swap it out for the word period like this, you're ready to move on. In phase two, you're still practicing, but now you should be able to hear that you're about to say the filler word. You hear it about to come out of your mouth, but you've progressed to the point where you can stop yourself from saying the filler and you only say the word period aloud instead or the word pause. In phase two, it will soon sound like this as you practice. I bumped into a good friend who I had worked with about period four years ago. Here's another example. We met up for lunch a couple of days later at a place that served period sushi. These are just samples. Your fillers may pop up in different places in your sentences. Once you're able to consistently avoid saying your filler and only say period or pause, instead, you're ready for phase three, the magical phase that we've been waiting for. In phase three, now you say the word period only in your head. You don't say it aloud anymore. So here's how it sounds in front of other people when I say period in my head with the same examples I mentioned a moment ago. I bumped into a good friend who I'd worked with about four years ago. We met up for lunch a couple of days later at a place that served sushi. Even a brief pause like this is usually all the time your brain needs to think of the word you want to say next. And as you improve, get in the habit of adding a brief pause anytime you finish a sentence, a thought, or anytime you're listing items where a comma would go. That's usually where we'll put the fillers. I'll put these words all together on the screen to show you what it sounds like in my head and you can hear how good it sounds with a silent pause. I was recently visiting some family in Florida. I love Florida in the winter. 
I love the weather, the water, and the food. By the time you are in phase three, you'll consistently be saying period in your head and your audience will just hear a fantastic pause. The first method is the period method. I've seen this technique work in a matter of just minutes of practice for lots of speakers when I coach them, especially if they practice a little louder than normal and their fillers stand out. But be patient, it may take you more time to get the hang of this if your habit is deep. The second method is to take a breath. Instead of saying the word period or pause, just inhale. The process for practicing is really similar. You have to inhale every time you hear yourself say a filler. And once you have that down pretty well, inhale when you can hear that you're about to say a filler. Inhaling gives you something to do instead of letting a filler slip out. Because if you're inhaling, instead of saying the filler, it'll sound like a pause to your listeners. I personally use both methods. The period method works well for just about any filler. And I use the extra breath or inhale method specifically when I'm in between sentences or at the beginning of a new thought. For example, I've noticed at the very beginning of presentations, the most common first words that speakers say are, all right, so. That's a filler. I watched six speakers the other day and four of them started with, all right, so. The beginning of a new thought like this is the perfect place to take a breath and not speak until the first words you want to say are already in your mind and ready to come out cleanly. Let's do a big picture recap of the overall process. Get comfortable with silence. Pauses have tons of benefits for you and your listeners. Identify your specific filler habits to make it easier for them to hear. And when you practice behind the scenes, replace your fillers with the word period in your head or pause or take a breath. Both approaches will create a nice sounding pause instead of a filler word and you'll sound more composed and confident in front of people. Be sure to download my quick guide to the top five essential communication skills that all professionals should have. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. There are plenty of other free resources on that page and feel free to leave a comment about your fillers and the ones you're trying to get rid of. Till next time, thanks, God bless, and I will see you soon.